Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast and Radio Show. Coming to you hot today on a very heavily requested podcast. And honestly, one of the biggest questions we get from people all the time on meal plans. And, uh, you know, do we make meal plans? Will we make meal plans for them? Uh, And I'm going to answer to you, no, we don't do meal plans in the way that you guys are thinking about it, especially if you're a fitness professional, you probably get this. If you're, you know, the end consumer, someone looking for that, uh, I'm going to dig into this. I don't know what we title this podcast. Remember, I'm trying to think of the infographic. Uh, either why I don't make meal plans or why meal plans suck or some some combination of the two. So obviously you can tell where this podcast is going just by the title alone. Um, but again, you guys, one of the biggest questions we probably get asked either uh, before or after somebody signs up for the program, that is, is, you know, do I get a meal plan or when do I get a meal plan? And the answer is uh, no, we don't do meal plans in the way that you guys are thinking of it because frankly, they suck shit. Um, and, and they don't work. If I had to guess over the years, I would say the failure rate of meal plans is probably like 99% for most people. Now there's certain contexts where like the 1% does work and something is going to pan out for people, but more often than not, uh, it doesn't solve the problem. And that's why we don't do it. Now, admittedly, if you would have called me probably, man, even before that, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, somewhere in there, uh, we probably would have gave you a meal plan and prescribed it for you. But that was before I had worked with with, you know, thousands of humans and seeing the beha- the behaviors, the patterns, and the rituals that they go through every single day. And I think that's the key. Uh, because for most people, um, it's just a band-aid on a gunshot wound, essentially. And that's the, what I'm saying to you is it, it teaches you to do something, but it doesn't change the habit and the pattern. It doesn't teach you a lifestyle. And that's why I, I don't think they're ideal. Now, I'm going to try to pull up my show notes here. Um, and, like, you know, typically what will happen is people will get a meal plan and they'll get samples. Now, we prescribe some of these. Like, we have a, a cookbook that was a bestseller on Amazon, uh, which people went through and bought. And we put some uh, prescriptions in there, kind of like a, a carb cycling template, if you will. But essentially, every meal plan looks the same. I mean, they're different, but they're very similar. Like if the macros fit, sure, but it's the same shit, whether someone's prescribing, you know, three meals a day, two meals a day, five meals a day. So for example, we give you, you know, someone, you know, goes on there, get their meal plan. It's breakfast. It's a veggie omelet with, you know, all the normal stuff, whether it be eggs, egg whites, maybe a little bit of cheese, some guacamole, spinach, whatever. And then the snack is like, you know, cashews and walnuts, maybe an apple, some shit. And then it goes to, I'm going to have a chicken salad with all the vegetables, you know, avocado, tomatoes, cucumber, olive oil, all the normal stuff. And then have a snack again and maybe the snack is uh you know almond milk mixed with protein powder and then the dinner comes back to you they have beef stir fry with chinese vegetables and then obviously maybe they have a dinner they have some kind of mixed berries and some dark chocolate and essentially that is your day and uh, it really doesn't have to get more complex than that and uh, people like oh that's super awesome that's super helpful i'm like well Unfortunately, uh, the failure rate is rather high from that because real life happens. And, and I'd say, I think it's kind of like programming. It's why I don't spend, you know, I'm not saying we don't program here because we do spend a lot of time programming, but not as much as I used to. And I've talked about this on the podcast uh, before about how to construct a workout and how to go through it. Because the sake of it, if I have somebody coming in here, like if, if, you know, Ralph comes in here and Ralph wants to train and Ralph misses, you know, six days of the month, but it's programmed out for him. Now the program is essentially worthless because if you're not following the program to a T, you're not following the program. It's the same thing with the meal plan. It's why I don't think it works because honestly, people just don't stick to it. Uh, They just don't. So no matter how jacked and excited and enthusiastic people are on day number one, the meal plan is tough to follow on day 26. You know, when your husband is an asshole or your wife is going crazy, your kids are running around doing stupid stuff, you get stuck in traffic, your boss has you stay late. Now we can't get our meals that are prepped and planned and we, we can't have the stuff there or we just don't have access to it. And then we find, you know, maybe we go too long, we get hangry, and then everything goes to shit. So if we miss that entire day of the meal plan, now the next day is off and so on and so on. And so that is one of the reasons why we don't do it. Because again, you guys, I understand, you know, there's so many factors that go into this. That's why we prescribe things that are lifestyle based, not just like printer a sheet of paper based. And so the biggest thing for you guys is if you can't follow it perfectly, I don't really see what the point is. Now, again, most meal plans are meant to be temporary anyway. So if you guys are doing something specifically for, you know, we get people and the funniest thing I get people like, Hey, Jeremy, I want to come in. I want to be super fit. Can you give me, you know, what to eat and what to train for the next, you know, four weeks? Cause I want to look good for Coachella. Now, again, that's, it sounds ridiculous, but that's, that's a real fucking thing that happens here. Um, the same thing goes for, if you're trying to drop a couple extra pounds, like for a wedding or, you know, for a bodybuilding competition or physique show or some kind of athletic event, whether 
be you know weight based or something like that that is probably the only area i can see it happening because our bodies usually adapt you know to a certain style of eating in that short period but again if the meal plan or the prescription is too strict for too long we can almost wind up with worse habits than we started and having you know some kind of you know hormonal or metabolic or mental you know consequences or damage because of that whether the calories be too low whether it's too restricted for our output something like that so Again, another reason why we don't prescribe meal plans, I don't think they're work. And again, BJ Gadur said this on the podcast when he came on, and uh, I've heard him say it before, and, and hopefully it stuck with you guys, but it stuck with me forever. You know, people follow a plan for a little bit, uh, you know, but it sucks and they're miserable doing it. And so his quote to me was, you know, if it's not sustainable, it's not attainable. And I believe that for life in general. And again, there's always short prescription things and that's fine. If something's a kickstart or a jumpstart or you're doing it for a competition or a certain stage of your life, that's fine. But for most people, if you cannot sustain it, you cannot attain it. So what is the point of doing something for a, a really short amount of time? And yet we, then we go back to our old habits, rituals, and routines, and we gain all the way back oftentimes even more so because our body is kind of fucked hormonally or the habits have changed so much, it's hard for us to go back to normal life. So, and again, I don't think it's worthwhile if we give you guys a certain, you know, a, a diet plan, a prescription or something to follow for a certain amount of period of time, but you hate it the entire time. So meaning this, we give you something to follow, follow this to a T, you have to eat, you know, six asparagus spears and you have to eat four almonds here. And you have, I mean, so detailed and so regimented. One, Anybody who's handing you guys, if you bought something from somebody, let me say this to you. If you bought something from somebody and they gave you something and it said, eat seven asparagus spears and it said, eat 12 almonds. What the fuck happens if you eat nine asparagus spears or if you eat seven almonds or 14 almonds, like you're gonna fucking die. Like it, it's, it's so ridiculous. And, and they do that to make themselves seem smart or that they're giving you like the holy grail or some secret here. Now, macros matter, but they're ranges, you guys. There's no way for us to really know. So it doesn't have to be that detailed. And again, some days you're hungrier, some days you're not. And again, you have to be willing to listen to your body and kind of go with the ebbs and flows of it. So again, short-term results, things like that, that's fine. But to me, I don't see the point of doing something that is so strict and so regimented, you can't live your life and you're miserable the whole time just to get to an end goal. And then you get to the end goal and you're like, oh wow, I did it for that. Now, if you're gonna step on stage or something and you want shredded glutes because it's a bodybuilding competition or something, that's something different. But for you guys, just to look good for your cousin's wedding, if you are miserable for six months to look good for you know 66 minutes and take six fucking pictures, if it's worth it to you, sure, that's cool. But to me, I'd rather not be miserable. I would rather enjoy the process of it because that's the game. Does that make sense? Like enjoy the actual process of eating healthy, fitting things inside the macros that you actually like. And you can do that, whether it be, you know, a cheat or treat meal, or if you do it little things each day or in abundance, whatever works for you, but enjoying the process of it. So you're not hating because you guys, that middle part, the work you're actually putting in the, the six weeks, the eight weeks, the 10 weeks, the six months, that's the bulk of your life. So to be miserable for the bulk of your life for a small payoff. And for most you guys if it's just for a photo like no offense but like we can't fucking tell what your body fat is like we don't really know anyway so to me it's more important to learn how to eat healthy make it a habit forever make it a lifestyle that's the real game so again you just the biggest thing for you guys you have to understand the process is everything and you just need to think about it when you're going through it just do things a little bit better. And again, for a lot of you guys, it's making a small change. It's making a small improvement uh, of what you're already currently doing and maybe swapping out one or two things that aren't perfect for you. So again, for you guys, how we coach it here is small steps. We go shallow and deep. And so when someone comes into our nutrition coaching program, like, do you have a meal plan? I can, I'll give you a million samples. I have no problem with the samples. If you want to play off something like a, like a, the bones of it, right? Like it's a basic structure. I'm okay with it, but don't be married to it. Make it fit your macros make it fit food you like. So if someone's like, well, you have to eat fish right here. If you fucking hate fish, don't eat fish. Why would you subject yourself to that misery? I just don't see the point of it. Like there's so many proteins. And again, there's not one singular food you have to eat. Like there's not one single carbohydrate that's going to be magic or one single protein. Do the things that you enjoy eating and, and take pleasure in the food. Again, we use food and now it's, it's become crazy in the world. Like we, our culinary experiences are, are that they're an experience. Like we enjoy what we eat, what we drink and where we're going. And that's fine. 
you can do that in a healthy, safe context. So again, on a Wednesday, you don't feel like you have to be, you know, choking down, you know, chicken and broccoli, or like I used to do when I was broke as fuck back in the day, you know, tuna fish and oatmeal, and I mix it together and I eat it like three times a day. Now, if you're broke as shit, it's, it's a great way to, to be shredded and fit your macros, but it tastes disgusting and you're a miserable human along the way. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. I would eat things that you guys like. So. It's just taking what you're currently doing. Now, if you're currently eating like shit, fast food, and drinking booze every day, that's a different thing. But for the most part, if you guys are making you know decent choices, it's just making better choices with each meal or each snack. So I'm saying to you, adding protein to things, adding certain veggies, eating less processed shit, focusing on more nutrient, like legit dense foods, uh, maybe drinking less alcohol and for surely less drinks that have sugar packed in it, drinking more water, eating your food slowly, planning ahead, simple things like that, you guys, are easy hacks to go along the way. So again, when someone comes into us, what we usually have them do is track the stuff on my fitness pal for a couple days so we can see what they're doing. Now, based off that, we go in, we adjust the macros based on their goals, whether they want to be, you know, bigger or leaner or whatever the metric is, whether it's performance or vanity base, which is most of the people we work with. Then we give them macros that kind of fit in between. So we kind of coach them shallow into deep end. So we start them slow and week by week, we gradually coach them based on how they feel, how they're moving, how they look and what's fitting their lifestyle, what's easier or hard for them. Now, if you get somebody who's drinking, you know, 22 glasses of wine a week to tell them to go to zero is probably not going to happen. So again, it's a gradual thing. And again, if you're patient, you know, and if it's fat loss as a goal, losing one to two pounds per week to me is super quick. That's a healthier way than, oh, I dropped seven pounds in one week and now it's stalled and it's slowed and I don't know what to do. So again, the biggest tips, just look at what you're currently doing and just make small little changes. So for things like, you know, stop going through the drive through every single day, uh, eating slowly, maybe picking a higher quality of restaurant or a higher quality of grocery store. Uh, you know, if you're drinking normal soda, drinking diet soda, if you're eating McDonald's seven times a week, eat McDonald's five times a week again it's little steps you guys and the next thing that would be you know actually understanding macros and actually understanding the quality of the food that you eat every single day matters and so when you're following just a meal plan or a prescription that someone wrote for you you're not learning anything for yourself and I guess that's the biggest key you know you should be in a program where they're teaching you how to eat for the rest of your life because you're gonna eventually have to do it. And that's a podcast we talked about before, why eating right is so hard, because it's a decision you have to win. If you eat three times a day or four times a day, it doesn't fucking matter. Whether you eat three, two, three, four, five, six meals per day, it's a decision you have to win two to three to four to five to six times per day, every single day for the rest of your life. And there's nothing else sure that's gonna fix it. There's no magic pill, there's no magic program or plan or anything else they're gonna do. It's you making the conscious decision to eat vegetables as opposed to eating chocolate and cookies and cakes. It's just, it, that's what it comes down to you guys. And so the next step in that, once you understand that, that you have to have an understanding of macros and that you can, you can follow a template and a sample, but you're going to have to still do the work no matter what. Cause when that sample is done or when the meal plan is done, now what? Now, what are you left with? That's why I think it's ridiculous. When people say, well, I'm going to work out to get in this kind of shape and then I'm just going to stop, you know, and just maintain. Well, dip shit whatever it took you to get to that level, you have to keep doing it if you want the results to keep coming. And you're probably gonna have to do more because every single day you're getting older, wrinklier, and softer. So there's always that we're fighting. So when you guys look to this, obviously, Focusing on eating real food, tracking macros. If you need a coach, get a coach or a community of people. Get your husband or wife on board. And again, they need to be on this with you. And if they're not, you kind of have to let them do their own thing because you're going to focus on yourself. The other thing is, you know, uh, prepping food or having some kind of system that works for you guys. Now, if it's eating so many meals per day, shopping, understanding like what you're going to buy before you go to the grocery store, I think is key. Um, having when you're looking at a menu for yourself and meal planning, understanding, you know, am I going to make meals once per week? Twice per week? Am I going to cook every single day in real time? Am I going to have one or two meals already for me before I go? Cooking and prep is huge. I think you guys cooking in bulk, whether it be casseroles, um, you know, stews, chilies, soups, or just bulk meat and bulk veggies is an easy, easy way to go about it. Um, sorting foods into the, to the bags or containers or planning healthy meals, looking at the restaurant and looking at the menu before you guys go or understanding what's close to your work, what's close to your travel, what you're going to have access to, I think is key. So sometimes you guys just doing basic legwork can go a long way can let you guys be super successful in order to do this so again the real goal you guys of, of getting a meal plan or having a sample is to eventually stop fucking using one like so if you do have a template you do have an example which we do hand our people when we walk them through you know a grocery store list and macro stuff the end goal 
is to actually get rid of it and be able to make this a lifestyle, something that you can do that A, you enjoy, you understand the balance of it, you're eating foods that you, you, you like generally, but it's allowing you to A, live your life and find a synergy of A, here's how I look, here's how I move, here's how I feel, and here's how I enjoy social eating and drinking. I think that's the key. So again, some people like to follow things super specific and I think that's fine, but if you're gonna do the meal plan route up front, use it as a template, use it as an outline, don't use it as a holy grail of I have to eat this every single day, every single meal, and if I don't, all will be lost. It's not that. Keep it short. They're meant to serve like a temporary purpose, then you work forward. And again, keep it real. Eating as much real food as possible, I think it's key. And make sure when you guys are you're doing something, when you're starting a new lifestyle change, you're not doing things that are going to overwhelm you, or you're not going to do things that make you feel guilty or regretful or you're bad, or like if you fall off the wagon or you become obsessed with it. And don't hate yourself for, for not being perfect up front. And that's my problem with some of these meal plans is like, oh, I fucked up. I, I did the wrong thing. Like, it's okay, like one bad meal doesn't equal a bad day. And again, you can't get into this complex where if it's not perfect, all I tell our people to do this, when you're doing stuff, A, enjoy your meals, slow down, breathe, relax, maybe eat slower, make meal time a real thing. You know, savor every bite. If it's sitting at, you know, a dinner table or sitting at a counter or a couch or not eating in your car, not eating gas station food, just doing basic stuff. But understanding the only progress you need to assess you guys is when you ask yourself this, is what I'm doing today better than something I would have done a month ago, three months ago, six months ago, or a year ago? And that's what the progress is. And again, there's gonna be trial and error with all of this. And so we make our people do the legwork. It's just like in business, somebody can't give you, here's the exact blueprint for my business and follow it and see if it work for you. Well. It, it probably won't work for you. You probably have a different skill set. You might even, even if your business are the same as business owners or technicians or managers, you're always gonna have a different outlet, a different way to run things. That's why, you know, your friend Susie, who's doing fucking keto, your shit's not gonna work like hers works. Odds are it's gonna be different because either she has a different mindset, a different skill set, a different body type. Who knows what it may be? Now you can use some of her examples and she might share with you something, but again, intermittent fasting doesn't work for everybody. Carb backlink doesn't work for everybody. Paleo doesn't work for everybody. The whole 30 doesn't work for everybody, but again, there's something out there that works for someone and that's why we coach nutrition on an individual basis person by person I think that's the only way to do it what I do might not work for you know what Jacob does and what Monica does might not work for what I do and I can almost certainly show you the way that I live you guys and eat and fast and train probably won't be ideal for you at least to start eventually you might get there but again I'm a 6'2 you know 225 pound dude it works for me and that's what easy for me to be successful and again it might not be the same for you so in the long and short of it that's why we don't make meal plans because A, I don't think they work. I don't think they help people. They take a crazy amount of time to put together to try to fit for somebody. And very few times, you guys I've worked with, it has to be close to probably like 10,000 people at this point. Very rarely have I ever seen it work at scale or the duration. But you know what I have seen work? People track their food on my fitness pal follow ideas, examples of things that they like to eat. You know, if it's pizza, it's eating pizza burgers or like pizza skillets and not, you know, crushing whole, you know, Domino's pizza instead. So still doing things that add taste and value and flavor and then planning the, the cheats and the treats and having somebody check in on them. Like if it's a coach or a community as an accountability partner, looking at what they're doing week by week. I think that's crucial and key. And so it's not giving somebody, you know, fish to eat for a day. It's teaching somebody to fish for the rest of their life so they can eat for the rest of their life on their own. My ultimate goal with everybody who comes in our stuff is not to get them to follow a fucking meal plan or rely on us forever. It's getting them to understand tracking macros and what real food is and understanding what goes in and what goes out and seeing that energy balance. And again, they might always come, you know, ask us for guidance or for help, but at the end of the day, they've learned the skill and they can take that skill with them for the rest of their life. So they have the foundation and from there they can do what they want with it. So in a nutshell, that's why we don't do meal plans because I don't find them to be successful for people and I don't think they work for most of you guys and I think overall if you're looking longevity of your life I think you're better off learning how to track macros how important they are and when I say macros you guys if you don't know go back and listen to the macro podcast it's just protein carbs and fats and again understanding micronutrients vitamins and minerals and again investing in a coach for a little amount of time who can teach you this shit so you can do it on your own I think is the key and whether you have to go back to them for you know little challenges and extra motivators and guidance that's fine too but the key is you guys know what to do. And a lot of people know, you know, a broad picture of what to do, but 
it's the application how to do it and when you can see it in real time you know what a glass of wine adds up to be or what that cheesecake ends up being or what you know nachos are you start to make better choices and you're more mindful when you go to the grocery store you're more mindful when you're planning and prepping food you're more mindful at dinner when you go out with friends and family you just start to understand the power of food and, and how it makes you look but more importantly how it makes you move and feel every single day and that's the key and that just comes from trial and error and you understanding you and again what you're doing today and that's why meal plans here's another thing why meal plans aren't ideal what you follow today which works might not work three months from now, might not work six months from now. I can almost promise you it won't work a year from now and five years from now, depending on if you have you know kids and a job and you travel or your body changes hormonally or just in general as we age. So I think the biggest thing is learning how to eat for life and not just kind of following a script and think it's going to be you know a one size fits all and you can do it forever. And again, it takes effort, you guys. That's why I say, you know, short of some real life altering shit and battling some stuff, eating healthy and eating right is one of the hardest things you're ever going to fucking do because it's a decision you're going to have to win every single day and you have to keep winning it if you want to keep being healthy and fit because it takes a long time to get there. Um, and it doesn't go away in a day, but I can promise you it goes away a lot faster when you start to make bad decisions. And again, that's all it is. It's just, you know, little daily habits and rituals of eating, you know, real food inside the macro ranges and, and balancing, you know, the way that best fits your lifestyle. So. Hopefully that helps you guys and kind of broke down of why we don't do meal plans. And if you're on that right now, I would urge you to, you know, I'm not saying get off it right away, but you know, start figuring out how to eat for your life and your happiness and your health and what fits your lifestyle to let you, you know, find the balance, whatever that is for you. So if you guys are on iTunes right now, stop. Don't be a lazy ass. Drop us a five star, leave a comment. We'd love to see it. And if you think they can help somebody right now eat a little bit better or make better choices, share the podcast with them. I truly appreciate it. There's a shit ton of you guys subscribing, um, but there's way more of you guys listening to the podcast than are subscribed. So if you're in iTunes right now, subscribe, share it with some people. I'd appreciate it most definitely. If there's anything we just want to hear on the podcast, shoot me a DM, send me an email or request it. I'm happy to record if I can speak on it. And until next time, Eat well, train hard, be nice to people, and please, you guys, keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.